Hi everyone, my name's Sophia and you're joining me today for another paint along. Uh, this time we're using Ecoline uh, watercolours, liquid watercolours from Royal Talons on Expressit Aqua watercolour paper. Now we masked down the paper, I've drawn out the design which is a dancing ballerina. I'm now spraying the paper with water. Spreading that around with a paintbrush, we want a really nice wet surface. This piece is, I guess, about creativity and experimentation. Uh, you can use whatever colours you want. Uh, you can, I guess, let the water and the paint do its thing. Just dropping some yellow on the page now and adding some pink drops. Just randomly putting them down. I try and do the lighter colours in the middle and the dark colours to the outside. When mixing the colours, you just need to be mindful of um, the complementary colours. So what colours are going to turn muddy on you? Um, yellow and purple, for example. We'll do that. Uh, and you can see me adding some aqua in and shortly I'll add some blue in, um, which mixed with the pink can make a purpley colour, then with the yellow can make a muddy colour. So you just need to be mindful of how you're dropping the colour in. But just go for gold and see what happens. You get some really beautiful effects. I add dark blue around the outside to try and create a bit of a vignette look and feel. And that's where it's quite dark on the outside and then lighter in the middle uh, into the focus point. Just adding uh, some drops of green as well. And you can see here that the, the paint is spreading into each other, creating some nice effects. The paper um, is allowing a little bit of pooling to happen. Um, and I overcome that by just moving the paper around, uh, blotting up a few of the uh, patches where it's pooled really um, heavily just to absorb some colour. And then just tilt the page around and around and around, allow the colours to flow. We'll run off the page, don't worry too much about that. I'm just putting some plastic down. Um, basically this allows me to touch the whole surface without getting my hands wet, but it also helps to blend the paint um, and you can try and get some extra paint movement and that sort of thing happening. One of the cool things about this is I'll always uh, lift the plastic off, um, get a new pre-masked piece of paper on a board, spray it with water and then put that plastic that I've pulled off the other painting onto this one and you get kind of an extra artwork. You see me there pulling it off. Um, it's a little bit messy but it's not too bad. Smudge it all around and then I normally leave the plastic on while it dries to create some nice effects and textures in the paint. So I put my page back down, my painting back down. I'm just adding a little bit of extra uh, vignette around the outside with the darkest blue I've got. Squeezing that on, lots of paint. I'm quite liberal with the paint with these sorts of paintings because um, I really like the effects you get. I'm just going to use a damp but clean brush just to take away some of those hard lines. Move the uh, blue around. So just using the paintbrush to push the blue um, paint around the edges just to spread it out, get rid of some of the pooled areas of it and encourage it to flow. Now I'm going to just once again add a little bit more blue to the edges. Sorry, I have to keep moving my camera um, to pick up the page because the board is a little bit big. Just tilting the paper from side to side to allow the edges to run. Uh, the 
paint will run off the edge of the um, board so just make sure you've got uh, a suitable surface underneath. This is rock salt. Um, you can see I've used some of that already but just a few drops of the salt around it uh, will absorb the moisture and create some really nice patterned effects. You can see it's just starting to absorb it. I've just uh, got some plastic, some bubble wrap, other bits of plastic and basically I'm just going to put them down, um, bubble side down. Uh, with a little bit of weight on them, I just use those uh, liquid watercolours that I've had out earlier, put them on it, weight down. Just This creates some nice texture um, and some interesting patterned effects too. I'm just getting a little bit of plastic um, and putting that down. I've just scrunched it up, put it down and weight it down with those paints. And then basically we're just going to leave that to sit here to dry for a little while. So now it's dry, I'm just pulling everything off it. Uh, I can see there's a couple of little tiny wet spots from where the salt is, where the uh, paint is peeled. But that's nice and easy to fix. So I've just pulled the bubble wrap off. Um, to clean that up, I tend to just try and wipe it. And you see, normally it's a bit drier than that. I've just got my rag and just picking up the couple of wet patches and then sweeping up the sand, uh, the salt. Just grabbing my black pen I'm just doing some outlines around the ballerina. I lost my pencil marks a little bit so I'm just trying to work out the positioning of it. And then disjointed lines is fine because we'll add to this as we go through. Now I'm just adding a little bit of, um, this is just clean water. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more paint around um, to highlight the dancer if you like. Give her a bit of uh, darkness behind her. I'm just using the colours that I've used in the painting. I'm just going to add drops of colour in so it sort of matches but darkens the background around her. So you can see me here adding the pink in. I'm just sped up the video here a bit, but uh, adding in the darkness and the border around her. Don't worry if it's not perfect or if you run over the lines, that's all good. Just making sure it all blends out and trying to avoid having any hard lines. You will pick up a bit of the eco line colour that's um, already dried when you re-wet it, but that just kind of adds to the effect. I'm now adding um, more of the dark blue paint into the corners. Again, get, trying to achieve that vignette look and feel uh, and just to darken the edge of it to really make the ballerina in the middle pop. Um, getting back some more water just to blend it all out. A bigger brush would probably be better here, but this is just the one I had handy at the time. Again, this is about experimentation and trial and error it's not about having the perfect tools the right paint brushes and all those sorts of things this is just about having fun um, and discovering what all the different textures can do uh, with paint and water salt textured surfaces like the bubble wrap or the plastic again just sped up the painting here but creating that vignette look and feel and then I'm going to dry it using my heat lamp. Once it's dry, I've got some stencils. Uh, and this is where it just, I guess it comes into its own. Uh, I'm getting a white uh, gel pen. Uh, and I'm just going to outline around the stencil um, to get that beehive look. So you don't have to use the same stencils as me, use whatever you've got handy. If you don't have anything handy, you could freehand it. Um, use circles, stars, love hearts, triangles, whatever it might be. I'm now getting some, um, just sorry, going to relay the hive just slightly off centre to where it was before. So just lining it up 
till it looks right by my eye. And then I'm going to get my uh, Amsterdam acrylic ink in the copper and a little sponge. And basically I'm just going to dab over the hive. It's not going to be perfect. Uh, to achieve a perfect imprint, you need, I guess, a removable sticker um, to stick to the surface so it doesn't bleed underneath it. But I kind of like the effect of having some of it perfect and the rest of it not. So dabbing over using the black sponge, um, this is just a bit of packing from a suitcase, I think it is. Inexpensive, whatever you've got lying around. Just lots of dabbing. And then I'm going to position, I've got a zigzag stencil, uh, which I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to position it. And I did the top right hand side to try and balance out with the um, copper in the bottom. Lots of light dabbing. Just want the hints of this one to come through. It doesn't have to be perfect again. Using my Kiravina Wink uh, markers, which are like a glittery paint pen, uh, which came in my art stash box that I received just before Christmas. This is the lemon yellow. I'm just similar to what I did with the black marker, just adding um, to the outline in broken lines. Really rough, doesn't have to be perfect. And just another way to create some dimension and some um, interest in this piece. I'm going to do the same with the other two colours I have, which is um, like a strawberry colour and I think it's called strawberry ice and the other one is aqua blue uh, and then a little bit of the eco line ink just in front there where I want to make it a bit darker. I also use those markers to create little rose effects on the petal, oh, sorry, rose effects on the dress uh, where some of those salt marks were. blending out the colours, a little bit more depth, I want a little bit more depth in her front um, in the contrast. These are the Van Gogh uh, metallic and inference watercolours, again Royal Talons, um, they're wonderful so I'm using the uh, inference pink colour or iridescent pink colour uh, and I'm just going to colour um, the ballerina with that just to give her a little bit of shine as the light catches her. Doesn't have to be perfect, just roughly, um, I guess, colouring inside those lines I created earlier. A little bit of water helps spread it around, and I'm trying not to go too much over those roses so we don't lose the effect of the lines um, in the water. I'm now using a little bit of copper um, just to create a bit of a splatter effect in the background, just to try and add to, um, I guess, the interest in the piece and, and tie it all together by using that copper colour. I'm trying not to get it on the ballerina herself, um, but if I do, that's all good. I'm just taking a moment to have a look at the piece. Is there anything more I can do? What can I add? Uh, have I done enough? And this is the difficult point where you kind of have to make a decision with, have I gone overboard or am I going to go overboard if I keep going? Um, so, you know, it's hard to make the judgment call, but um, just kind of roll with it and see what happens. I'm adding a bit of an outline in black. Um, I have a terrible habit of uh, smudging my paint with the paintings with my hand and my arm. Um, so just make sure it's dry when you come to do this. And I'm just doing broken lines around the edge just to add a little bit of a border effect. Uh, 
and then I'm just doing a couple of little um, circle-y dot patterns. These don't show up very well in the video, but um, it's just about creating, I guess, some effects and some texture and some points of interest in the piece. Uh, another way just to tie it all together so we can take the, the black ink from her dress, the border uh, and the background and bring it all together. I'm now taking the tape off the edges. Make sure it's dry when you do this, otherwise it will rip. And there's our finished ballerina there, uh, all ready to go. And I'm just making sure I'm entirely happy with it. Um, this here is the piece we did earlier that we put the plastic on, so you can see that nice effect that creates just a way of using leftover paint. Um, and I've created some really interesting textures and pieces doing that. Uh, so here's our finished piece. Thank you for joining me. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to either watch this video or paint along with me. Please provide me with feedback uh, or visit my, face, uh, my Instagram page, which is at PHIACZ. P -H -I -A -C -Z. Um, here's some of the materials I've used, uh, the Royal Talons Eco Line Inks, the Bubble Wrap, the Amsterdam Acrylic Ink uh, and the Carolina Markers. Once again, thank you and I'll see you next time.